Hello there and welcome! For today's Pathfinder video we have my updated Arushale build already for the Enhanced Edition, both her Redeemed and even her Corrupted version as well, with two very fun and different builds that are sure to turn her into a super powerful sniper, with a decent amount of attacks per round, amazing critical damage, and of course, great damage per hit as well, especially considering the many shot ability that lets you fire two ranged attacks as your first attack action. Plus, she can provide many great skills for your party, including eventually becoming the ultimate character at stealth. Lastly, she can also provide party-wide support through her ranger spawn ability to share some of her favorite enemy bonuses with infinite uses. Though without further ado, let us get into our double Arushale builds. Alright, so Aru comes at the earliest, at level 8, meaning you have from 9 on Wars to customize her. And if you're wondering how to recruit her early, I already have a guide for that, you can check in the pinned comments down below or to the side here. But anyways, the good thing is she already starts with all of the good ranged feats. Rapid shot, deadly aim, precise shot and many shots, she pretty much comes with the entire package. So she is very min-maxed, in a way. While you could definitely make her a slayer and let's say spawn slayer for some sneak attack progression, study target and a lot of bonus feats, I would rather keep her as a ranger and her special subclass, because otherwise you won't get to make use of the ranger spawned ability. Aru has this instead of a pet. Ranger spawned can give half Aru's favorite enemy bonuses to your whole party, and the best part is you can actually pre buff with this. There's no point in casting this during battle because it has a pretty decent duration. The main issue is this only works based on Aru's favorite enemy bonus, which is only increased if you keep her as a ranger. If you multiclass her away from it, at the very maximum she'll give your allies a plus 2 bonus against demons of magic, which is kinda limited, so I'll be keeping her as a ranger. For skill points, mobility is a must have if you've recently watched my ranged lawn build, then you already know the best longbow in the game has bonus damage based on your mobility ranks. Plus, she has amazing dexterity. Besides that, trickery, stealth, once again, high dexterity. And as far as stealth, she's pretty much the best stealth character in the whole game because of her special undercover boost. Then also perception, she gets plus 4 from trap finding. And I would dump the rest of the points into use magic device since she also has high charisma, so she can then benefit from scrolls and also support your party with them, especially Divine Scrolls. As far as Persuasion, I really don't bother because I often go with Darren, who is way better at this. The same for, let's say, Amber if you have her. When it comes to feats, I don't think it's worth to have Aru specialize in the ranged attack of opportunity feats because they take quite a while, and she will be using long bows from very long range. She won't be close enough to our allies unlike my mounted Lun. What I'd pick now is Improved Initiative. The higher Aru's initiative, especially as a ranged, dexterity character, the faster she can snipe, problematic, targets to defeat them before they can even react, while also catching them flat-footed for lower armor class. For your level 10 ranger bonus feat, archery and then improved critical longbow. And then this is pretty important, because Aru is not a demon slayer, she has to choose what types of demons to specialize in when it comes to favorite enemy. She already has two stacks into demons of magic, which are some of the most annoying ones, as they are the ones that often spam crowd control abilities on your party, such as succubus, just like Haru. For now, go with demons of slaughter. While demons of strength are way more powerful, they also only start appearing way later in the game, so I'd rather save them for the next favorite enemy selection at level 15. Now, keep progression into demon of magic, we'll actually keep increasing demons of magic into all of the other secondary favorite enemy choices and the reason is simple. We want as high favorite enemy bonus as we can have with at least a single type, so we can then use the instant enemy ranger spell to treat any other enemy in the game with the highest amount we have, which actually also applies to her ranger spawned ability for a plus 4 to the attack and damage rolls of all your allies, no matter the enemy you're facing. Of course, you can't spam instant enemy against every single enemy in the game, it's better left for problematic targets and bosses, but with this arrow build, you'll have more than enough spell slots for it, as I will show you later on. For level 11, we might as well get started into our Shatter Defenses package, so weapon focus, longbow. At level 12, increase strength to make it an 
even score. Remember, composite longbows will add our strength modifier to their damage. For level 13, Dazzling Display. Don't bother actually using this, it's just for shatter defenses. And then favor Terrain Abyss, as we are pretty close to chapter 4. For level 14, Archery, and then Improved Precise Shot, which can help a lot for enemies that have consumed sources not bypassed by true scene. For level 15, Shatter Defenses at last. Yes, this will work for ranged attacks too, and as always, remember to combine it with the Frightful Aspect spell. And then our first stack of Demons of Strength, plus continue progression into Demons of Magic. For level 16 and 12, increased dexterity. Now at level 17, you'll cap out on all of the skills that I told you to get. You can spend the remaining points into anything, it won't really make much of a difference, such as Arcana or Persuasion even. For level 17, you might as well pick Hammer the Gap here. For some extra damage, it's not that much of a difference, but at this point, we kinda already have everything that's truly worthwhile. Then for 18, you can go for Archery and Point Blank Master, Longbow. I just don't find this useful for Aru because she will fire her bows from very long range. Chances are, enemies will never actually rush for her because you have all the party members to block the path. I would personally just go with Skill Focus. And to me, stealth, like I said, the choice is up to you, you can even go with toughness if you want. For level 19, you can truly pick any feat you want. As I said, you have skill focus, you can even pick stealthy to boost both mobility and stealth. Of course, there's always toughness. And since level 4 ranger spells are somewhat disappointing for Aru, you can also go for heightened spell, which is what I'll pick here. To get more castings of the level 3 instant enemy. At this level, you also get improved query, which is extremely powerful. Remember, it is a free action so you can cast it as many times as you want with no limitation. For level 20, go with Outsiders. There is a reason we are picking this, even though we already have favored enemy into demons. Some enemies in the game are Outsiders, but not demons, especially for the first DLC, Inevitable Excess. And then resume progression into Demons of Magic for our final stack. Alright, now let's talk Mythic progression, first for our... Redeemed Aru. Well, Cleaving Shot is a must-have for pretty much any ranged character. Being able to deal area damage with your ranged attacks is amazing. For Mythic 2, I would already go for Mythic Rapid Shot, because the penalty from this is annoying that it applies to every single one of your ranged attacks. It's not just the first. With this, we completely remove that. For Mythic Level 3, Distracting Shots to help your melee allies hit the enemy. For Mythic 4, you have two choices, I prefer Mythic Deadly Aim here, since it empowers every single one of your attacks, but you can also go for Mythic Critical and Longbow if you prefer. I would rather delay because Longbows, they don't have that high critical range. For Mythic Rank 5, Abundant Casting. Rangers have amazing level 2 and level 3 spells, such as Sense Vitals, but most importantly Instant Enemy, which is part of why you made Aru a full ranger. For Mythic level 6, Mythic Critical and Longbow, or if you prefer Mythic Initiative. For Mythic 7, I'd go for Exposed Vulnerability now, since Aru has many shot, and at this point, well the bonus damage isn't that amazing, but the scaling is finally starting to get good. For Mythic 8, Mythic Initiative or Critical, depending on what you picked before. As for Mythic 9, the bigger they are, at this point, we are fighting a lot of demonic enemies that are of size large or huge, so we get a nice bonus from this. Of course, you can always pick less 10 to, it's just that Aru as a ranged character should pretty much never get hit. As for Mythic 10, honestly, you kinda already have everything you could want. You might go for Mythic Weapon Focus, Flawless Attacks, or get another Mythic ability like Last Stand. Even ranging shots, although I kinda don't find it useful. Alright, now let's discover our corrupted Arushale build. Unfortunately, unlike the normal Aru, she only comes at level 15, which means you only have 5 levels to customize her. I suppose the good part is she already has almost all of the feats you could want for a ranged character. I really don't see much of a point into keeping her as a ranger. The main reason is almost her entire favorite enemy will come pre-picked for you. And while they do fit corrupted Arushale lore-wise, gameplay-wise, <laughs> Oh man, they're just so bad. Let's take a look at this. We have two stacks of favorite enemy dwarfs. One of halflings, one of elves, and three of humans. The problem is, at the point you get Corrupted Aru back, chapter 5, you aren't fighting any of these enemies, so yeah, not much to do. This means her ranger's bond ability is kinda crap. At most, you have to compensate through instant enemy 
which will work with the highest modifier, so humans, plus 6, or plus 3 to ranger's bond. So for boss battles at least, it's still viable. What I would prefer to do is go fighter and mutation warrior. With 5 levels into this, we'll get the mutagen, just like vivisectionist, 3 bonus feats, exactly what we need, because remember, corrupted aru doesn't come with shatter defenses, Last but not least, weapon training. While it will only be a single stack of it, there are many gloves in the game that can enhance it by, at the very least, plus two. The reality is, by the time you get Corrupted Aru, your party will be, at the very least, level 18, 19 even. So, the fact the Mutagen only comes at level 18 won't really matter, because you already have it by the time you level her to your party's level. Now, for level 16, I'd rather just increase Dexterity, she has some odd scores here, and then at 20 you can increase strength. As far as skill points, she has the same skills as normal Aru, however, she doesn't start with anything use magic device, so I would rather dump all of the first level points right here. The rest you can get through buffs and so on. Then for her level 16 fighter bonus feat, Dazzling Display. From level 17 onwards you can resume putting points into the normal skills, especially mobility, because we need it at 20 ranks for the best longbow. Stealth is fun too, and I just go for perception and use magic device. Trickery, there's so many boosts to it and she has high enough dexterity. Now for level 17, be sure to pick Shattered Defenses and then improve at initiative, just in time for Mythic 8, which is when I would get Mythic Initiative. So the good thing is, because you'll definitely be level 18 by the time you get Corrupted Aru back, she'll already have Shattered Defenses and improved initiative. For level 19, because we are a fighter, we can actually pick Weapon Specialization and Longbow, which is rather fun for this build, so we aren't just a copy of our normal Aru. For another feat, since Corrupted Aru actually bothered picking Critical Focus, we might as well pick one of the special critical feats, even if bows don't really have high critical range. At the very least, she'll have many attacks for higher chances of criticals. My favorite one is Staggering Critical, because while this does have a save, even if the enemy makes the save, they'll still be staggered for one round, which is great. And staggered enemies are restricted to just a single action, or just a single attack, no matter how many attacks per round they have. For level 20, increased strength, and then weapon training and bows, of course. Now let's talk mythic progression for our corrupted Arusha Lei. Her first five mythic abilities and feats were actually changed in a patch, which is great because before this, if you watch my older video for her, she used to come with pretty questionable mythic abilities. Anyways, go for mythic critical and longbow. For mythic 7, well, distracting shots is the best one here. For mythic 8, mythic improved initiative. Corrupted Aru will only get weapon specialization at around level 19, which shouldn't be enough for Mythic 8, so you might as well delay Mythic Specialization for Mythic 10. Then at Mythic rank 9, the good thing is by the time you get Corrupted Arusha Lei back, you'll either be at 9 already or super close to it. So I would go for Abundant Casting for the same reasons as normal Aru, especially because Corrupted Aru is even more reliant on instant enemy due to her questionable favorite enemy picks. As for Mythic 10, Mythic Specialization and Longbow for 5 extra damage. Alright, so let's cover gear for our Arus now. Both her versions share pretty much the same gear. For the amulet, back rank assistance is a must-have. While our Aru does not get attacks of opportunity as a ranged character, we can pretty much overcome that through this amulet. For armor, snake skin is the ultimate one for any dexterity ranged character, thanks to the huge plus 4 profane bonus to dexterity. Before that, you also have web strider for plus 2 morale. And remember, you also have some armors that increase your stealth by amazing amounts. To make sure, Aru always helps your party avoid random map encounters. There really isn't any special robe or cloth. I just have the cloth of heavy fortification here for 75% critical and sneak attack immunity, which doesn't matter that much for Aru as a ranged character. You can leave this to someone else. For belts... At first, belts of dexterity, later belts of both dexterity and strength. For gloves, this is different based on your Aru. For the corrupted Aru, we want gloves of dueling, because this will enhance your weapon training by plus 2. So even though we only have a single stack from level 5 Mutation Warrior, we have plus 3 to training. For the normal Aru that went full ranger, you want big game gloves, for the amazing synergy it has with Improved Query as a free action. For boots, I actually have the sure footing boots here, because my Corrupted Aru has a demon main character, 
so I was able to get this pair of boots for once. But for the normal Aru, well, it's either Bronax Sacrifice if you want to increase her attack rolls by a plus one, otherwise there really isn't any other special pair of boots. For the helmet slot, you actually don't need to increase charisma as high as possible with Aru, this pretty much only results in one extra level 2, 3 and 4 slot. There's always the Shy Lily Helmet for an extra plus 4 profane strength, meaning 2 extra damage with your longbows. But my preferred choice here would actually be the Windmaster Helmet for the plus 4 bonus to initiative. After all, the higher we can get Aru's initiative, the faster she can go for an alpha strike to easily snipe any problematic target in but a single round. For Googles, Googles of Malokio for any ranged character. For Cloak, the Lone Wolf's Cloak as she will be far away from our party to ensure she gets the nice bonuses to damage and saving throws. For Rings, the usual for any ranged character, first Merciless Shot. And remember, if you want your Aru to always be in the range of point blank shot, just activate it right here. Besides that, the Ring of Guiding Star, once again for even more initiative. The bonus damage is fun too. As far as braces, for my LAN video I said I wasn't sure if you could get the normal braces of archery, but in reality you can. Only if you have the treasure of the Midnight Isles DLC, however. Alright, now let's get into weapons and quick slots for our Arus. The ultimate weapon for any version is of course the Killing Pace, which you can buy from the Skeleton Merchant from World Map Encounters during Chapter 5 only. Having an extra plus 10 damage based on your mobility ranks is super powerful because it applies to every one of your attacks. And you can buff it with quite a lot of stuff depending on what spells and abilities your characters have. Mine for example has Living Bane, Axiomatic and Holy. But for the other powerful longbows, I already have a guide with the best ones here with complete progression from the beginning to the end game. You can check to the side or in the pinned comments down below. Now let's get into quick slots. The Seal of Jubilex can provide some decent crowd control effect on hit. Any powerful divine support scrolls like Mass Heal, Restoration and so on, since our Aru will have decent enough ranks in to use magic device because of her high charisma. Also a lesser extend meta magic rod, mostly to extend sense vitals and also hurricane bow early in the game. The same for Aspect of the Falcon, the minor imp pet, for profane bonuses to trickery and stealth, two skills Aru excels at. And as usual for any character that doesn't have a pet, you can always use the Bismuth statuette to give yourself a nice Triceratops. The Old Grimoire can be super powerful for a ranger too, because it will actually increase your level 1, 2 and 3 slots by even more. And as I said, the more instant enemy casts you have, the better for Aru and your whole party through her ranger spawn ability. Well alright friends, so this was it for my redeemed and corrupted updated Agro Chalet builds. If you found them useful, please remember to like, subscribe and even consider becoming a channel member to help the channel grow if you can. Thank you for watching and see you next time friends.